This is the plaintiff, Anthony. He says he and the defendant shared an apartment and the defendant turned out to be a crazy person. They did nothing but argue and fight. The defendant's a slob. And he was forced to move out in a hurry because he was afraid the bug-eyed defendant would totally lose it on him. He's suing him here and now for every penny of the $1,356 he's owed in rent and belongings the defendant trashed. This is the defendant, David Marks. He says he thought the plaintiff was a positive person at first, but things soon turned creepy with the guy. He oiled his feet in the living room. The man entered his room and washed his clothes and even signed the both of them up to join a cult. He doesn't owe him any money because the weirdo moved out with no notice and abandoned his belongings. He's accused of being a rough roommate. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you've asked us to refer to you as Anthony. Yes. We will do that. Anthony, you are suing David Marks uh, for $1,356 in rent and items that he uh, inappropriately threw out of correct. yours. Yes. You used to be his roommate, correct? Correct. What happened? Well, um, the defendant and I made a verbal roommate agreement um, that I would pay $675 per month plus utilities starting on February 1st through the end of May of 2015, making that my primary residence for that time being. Uh, I, on May 1st, there was an incident that illustrated- you, Did you know each other before this? Yes, we did. How did you know each other? Um, we're classical musicians. Okay. And we played on jobs together. Okay. And how long had you known each other? I thought it was five years. I think it's less than that, three, okay. four years. For several years, and yeah. then what happens? Um, then through conversation, I needed a room to stay, and he said he, a room was opening up for him. Right. I had thought we were friends, and I, we had gotten along really well. Um, it was great in the beginning, but it, things started to sour, in, from what I remember. How long did you live there until things soured? Um, end of March. So pretty quickly, you pretty there for quickly, two months yeah. and then things sour. Yeah. And why did they sour? Things that I would do seemed to really make him angry, and I couldn't quite understand what was like going what? on. Well, apparently, um, oiling my feet. I'd never oiled my feet uh, in the living room. It was very bizarre for did me to hear that. Did you oil your feet? No. Oh, <laughs> no. It was the winter, and I had a roll-on for my heels, and oh, I did okay. it once in the living room, and I thought that was a very interesting uh, point that he had made up. But, okay. Um, okay. What was the problem? Well, I mean, I can really get into those things, but they don't really pertain to the case so Why much. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? What? Okay, I, I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> all right, so I had a rough couple of auditions. So this guy signs me up to this thing called Landmark. It's, if you Google it, it's like a self-help uh, cult. Like the word cult comes up. I said no numerous times, like so many times, even when the guy that works for Landmark was on the phone He's, and he was like trying to get me to pay for it, him to pay for it. And so I said, wait, how much does it cost? And it cost $620. And I'm like, no way, Anthony. But you're actually Just, talking to the guy? So would you have oh, done yeah. it other than the money? No, I, okay. I, I'm not gonna do it. I, so why I, are you even talking to the guy? Right. So he made me talk to him, and I'm, I'm talking to the guy. So I, once I found out how much it costs, I'm just like, absolutely right. not. But you're, so you're talking to the guy, and then you think you're doing something nice, and you go out and you actually buy him the, the, the yeah. meetings or whatever. It's, what called Lam it's called Landmark Education. It's a landmark forum, and it's the study of ontology, the study of creating a life, living it powerfully, and creating a life you love. And I have had been saving for a laptop, but I thought I, would, I thought I was friends with the defendant. And he was going through a rough period, and I th thought, how can someone be so negative? And I just thought, just try to, and it's not even a religious thing. It's a, just a seminar it's creating a life you love and living it powerfully. And he took it into something that was so different. And he k kept on bringing this up, even though I Wait, took full what responsibility. Happened? You bought it for him? And I, then bought, I bought it for him. Did you get your money back? Because he no, said, I'm not, not going. It's not, it's non refundable. And he so made, did you go? No, no, no. I have a year credit. Okay. Um, and so you thought that was like crossing a boundary? Once I said no, numerous times, I mean, even if my best friend, my mom, my, my brother were to get me a gift, $600, I'd say return that immediately. 
I'm not accepting it. It's way too much money. He just doesn't understand. He's a good guy. He really is, deep down. He just doesn't understand where the boundaries are. If someone says no, that means no, man. I'm not going to do it. I mean, and there are numerous other things. So what was like the snap? Things. What was the last thing that happened that caused the problem? Okay. Where he so the last thing that happened was this. For three months, I would get text messages virtually every single day with him detailing his schedule to me. And again, that's nice, but I don't need to know these things, you know? I don't care when you but leave the house. But why did you just tell him that? I, okay, I was you kind of keeping it all until up you were, Right, right, right. Until you because up. he was doing good things and he has good intentions. Yeah, but what is that? I don't care how good his intentions right. are. Somebody's texting me their whole schedule every day. I tell him, listen, I feel really bad for you, but I got a really busy schedule too. I can't be reading your schedule every day. Exactly. You know, just say something normal, like right. face to face, so not did, by text. And I sent him a text right afterwards. Right. And, and, and I, this took place the day before May 1st, and I said, Dear God, period. I know you mean well, but I really don't need to know what you do yeah, when you do a, it. That, and he took it very personally. Text is never for reaching out to another human being. You have a situation, this is just I'm giving you advice as an older, wiser woman, mm -hmm. that you, you, you know, when you have to live and get along with somebody in a roommate situation, in a relationship situation, in a boss situation, whatever it is, trust me that it is always better to look into someone's eyes and have empathy and see how uh, the way what you're saying is going rather than Tech, nasty text. Um, you know, it's just not a good idea. But in any event, you're driving him crazy. He doesn't need to know your whole schedule. Actually, so he, he wrote, writes that back, which is a little, you know, bad. Really but then what happened to, cause that's not enough for things to snap. So what happened for things to snap? Um, so May 1st, the, an, an argument ensued when I came back because I had been apartment sitting. What was he and, saying? Oh, that we have to talk. He was uncomfortable with me. You he, need to stop what you're doing. You're irritating me. Um, cross your arms and just be, you're in court. So you don't pace and, go ahead. Um, I was actually late. I was actually said, I have to get out of here because I'm really late. And I slammed the door. There was a, that flight or fight, wait, fight or flight sensation that came over me because I've once seen. So you slammed the door and said what? I said, I can't believe I'm living with such a Okay. Because I, I had to come out because there was months of me holding it back inside. Okay. All inside. So now apparently the floodgates have opened and then he starts to text you and you feel that it's threatening because well, it's he, like you would never say it to my face. You better not say it to my face. Correct. We'll see what will happen. Right. And then there's all these texts back and forth. So you come back to that apartment when? I came back later that night. Okay. Um, with a friend of mine. I actually texted, I'll be coming back tonight with the police. Okay. Uh, be and and I, then you came back with a friend, and friend. did you take all of your things? I took the majority of my things. Um, the defendant had- Why didn't you take all of your things? It was such a last minute thing. Um, okay, so did you, ex did you make a plan for when you, when had you paid May's rent? I actually paid on the 3rd of May. Had he, was that an issue at all between you guys? I kind of said, where's the rent? All right. No, uh, no, so, I, no, no, ne never. Not that then. All right, so you, so you take everything that you can take, but that's not everything. And it's obvious it's not everything, right? Your bed is still there. Right. Did you cash the, the check? Oh, yeah. Okay, so he's paid up for May, and yet you throw out all his stuff. So mm -hmm. why don't you explain that? Okay, well, actually what happened prior to May 1st was I sent him that text saying, I don't want any more of your text messages about your schedule. He took it quite personally. He came back the next day around noon and he was visibly agitated, like visibly upset by the text, I think from the night before. And he slams my door is like, and, and then he starts calling me names and then I don't hear from him. Anyway, I have a gig. May 1st, I get back around 2 o'clock in the morning, May 2nd, as my text message over there will show. All of his stuff is gone except for his bed. And this is kind of a relief, and I'm happy for this. But I need to know like, where the money is so I can pay the rent. I didn't hear from him for a week. He says he sent it on the 3rd. I received it on the 8th, and I texted him immediately afterwards saying, thank you for the money. However, I waited an entire week. And I, I, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I heard nothing. And we live in an era where there's electronic communication all over the place. It's ubiquitous. And you can email me, you, you, you can text me, Facebook message me, you can throw up a smoke signal, like whatever you gotta do, just let me know that you're gonna come back for your bed. So as far as I was concerned, he was gone. Not paying anything for May, nothing. Was there any communication between the two of you from May 1st when you left to May 8th? No, I was strongly advised by the police. I started a police report uh, from the texts for, I received from him on May 1st and 2nd. Was there any communication from you to him? 
Yes, I texted him right afterwards. I said, where's my money? All right, so <laughs> May 8th comes and you receive it in the mail, you cash it, you yeah. send him a text saying, that's great, I cashed it, thanks, and I threw out your stuff. Yeah, I think it's bad, like mostly- Oh, let stuff. me see the text. All right, toss your bed, rice cooker, etc. Right, not bed, bed, rice cooker, etc. Right. Yeah. So you clearly know that it was more than the bed. Oh yeah, yeah. See here's, and then uh, according to you, you tell him I spoke to a lawyer. I'm solid, and this is open and shut. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really speak to a lawyer? I did. I I, I spoke to two attorneys, friends. Attorneys of mine. who actually practice law. What kind of work do they do? Legal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, um, if you have a roommate and you don't get along, is it better to confront the person early and just deal with it or not say anything and hope that it gets better? Um, I would say speak up and confront them early. But that could cause animosity, right? Absolutely, but if you don't say anything, then the problem won't get fixed. Okay, ever have a roommate that you didn't get along with? Yeah, I have a twin brother, so he's pretty annoying. For... Interesting. Do you get along or not get along? Uh, we kind of get along, but it's, he always tries to annoy me, and I've learned after quite a long years just to ignore him. Interesting. I never quite heard that before. I, I thought it was always simpatico. Uh, going inside the courtroom. They don't know what they're talking about if they told you this is not a problem. They are wrong. Well, I mean, I, you're definitely more of an authority than I am. That I guy would really. think so. <laughs> right. Here's the thing. I know it feels natural to say, geez, I thought the guy was out. I thought he left this behind. You know, if, if the marshals remove a body, you can throw everything out. But if the person leaves and leaves yeah. something behind, yeah. the law is that you have to wait a reasonable amount of time before you right. dispose of it and consider it abandoned. So you can't, as a landlord, which is essentially what you were to right. him, toss out his stuff, even if it looks to you like the guy's not coming back. You actually have to sit there with it for 30 days. All right, so now, do you have receipts for the things that you're claiming? Uh, the thing, no, I do not. How do you come up with your figures? Oh, um, that's what I had paid for. Well, how do you know if you don't have receipts? How do you know what you paid for? I remember. I think this is the part where I'm going to use my best judgment. Okay. Describe the queen size bed you left behind. How long had you had it? From February, three months. Okay. Th three months. Okay. Let's talk first about May rent because we have a couple of issues. Yes. All right. Um, the problem is, and the reason why you cannot get your May rent back is because of the fortuitous circumstance that this happened on May 1st and not April 30th. Okay. Because had it happened the day before, you would be able to get your rent back. But once you start to live one day in a place, then you're, you've already paid the rent, you're already living there, the month has started. Now the standard for you to get your rent back is very different. Now the standard is, is the place uninhabitable, okay? I read the text carefully. I understand how you felt that there were veiled threats, but they, you know, it, it, you know, frankly, I don't think that they ra rose to the level of you being able to get your May rent back. I think okay. this is just two people smack talking and fighting. And right. so, no, you are not getting May rent back. Okay. All right? Thank Good you. luck, folks. Thank you. Well, first out of the courtroom here, the defense steps in uh, and says, well, what about how, how this came out? I'm shocked. I guess when people just lie, it's it's... It comes off as truth. He only paid like a hundred bucks for that bed. I was right there when he did it. So, have you had other roommates? I have. Right. And how's it go with the other roommates? Usually fine. They usually just like my like mind themselves. I mind myself. You're like, not the yeah. kind of guy who should be living alone. I like to live alone too. Yeah. Of yes. <laughs> who doesn't like to live alone? Uh, All right, sir. Right this way. All right, so step on out here, and um, you didn't get everything you sued for. You understand why you don't get Correct. any rent, yes. right? Yes, okay. I do. You satisfied how this comes out? Um, actually, I am, and um, I would like to say that his character really, it's, he's masking, he's really a troubled person, actually. Were you trying too hard to be too friendly too soon? No, actually, because we were friendly prior to this, and I just saw him in a bad state, and I thought, really, I was trying to help him out to pull him out of the negativity of life. And He, he described that as a cult. That, uh, it's not a cult. Thing. Harvey? Okay, Kurt, you know, the laws of abandonment vary from city to city, so what you should do is either check online with your city or call your local police department. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.